your friend of God. You're my friend. So I ask you, God, to decrease me and increase you. That your word will have free courses. Learn about God in my living room. 
Lord, have mercy. Ah, come on and go with me to 2 Samuel, 11th chapter. We're going to start at the 14th verse. We're going to take it from 14 to the 26th verse. As I say, I honor my double dip chocolate, my husband. Ah, y'all better get y'all some, some sweetness to honor. I honor my husband. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. Him, all my beautiful children. Me and my husband have, we have a lot of kids. But we got a lot of spiritual children that we love too. And I just want to take this time to say I love my spiritual children. They are a powerful force to be reckoned with. Some of them go out and preach right on the street. I love it. I was hanging out with Q the other day. And I love it that I, I get a chance to hang out with each one of them individually. Sometimes it's just me and them. The other day I was hanging out with uh, Quentin. And um, I seen a sign that said they was bringing the pride. I guess the, the gay pride or something to the downtown. And he said, what's that name right there? Oh, I'm going to get Shut up. We, we, we're going down there. The priest right on that day. Yep. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> we're going to preach Jesus right there. What day they got that out there? I said, bless him, Jesus. <laughs> I, looked, I looked at the sign. I said, him and they going to be right downtown with the bull horns and things. So, Come to Jesus. <laughs> but I promise you, they was outside. In Halloween, it was cold outside. She was preaching Jesus. It was cold outside. She had a poor one to myself. This is witchcraft. This is not of God. I said, I love it because they bold. Will God find faith on the earth? Will he find somebody that will be bold for him to look like a spectacle? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. I was preaching outside what was it, about a week ago. That's the new ministry. So to all you pastors that's watching us overseas, do a lot of outside preaching. Come out of the walls. Go out. Have church outside. Where the people at? Go where the people at. That's one thing I, I love about uh, Minister Q and the band like they will go where the people let. And they ain't scared. And preach right there. They took out a flat in Chicago. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love them too. I had time to spend time with them the other day. We went to with the kids and yesterday and we was sitting with the kids. I just I guess she can, she can, she can, she can just about, I guess she can hang with me so long now she can tell what I'm thinking. So I'm watching the kids move. I'm just saying to myself, this is retarded. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally turned to her and said, this movie sucks. <laughs> 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 and she said, I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> I said, ooh, we, maybe we need to make some cartoons for our kids to watch. Because they, I mean, this stuff right here is just ridiculous. Me and Kevin was flipping through the TV trying to find a movie. I said, this is ridiculous. So I guess we got to get into movies, too. So we can get the people something to watch. Hey, Amen. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. sick of this. I'm All right. Y'all ready? Let's go to the Word. I ain't got no more friends. It's time to preach. I tell my husband, much as I love you, if you ain't my friend, when it's time for me to preach the Word. Amen. I ain't got no friends. You hear that, Russell? I ain't got no friends. Come on now. When it's time for me to preach. And I just want to say the same thing to you. When it's time for you to preach the word, no you don't know mama, daddy, sister, brother, uncle, cousin. You don't know your wife as much as you love your wife. You don't know nobody when it's time for you to preach. Because you have to preach the truth. And so that the people can get set free. So let's go. Um, the second seven and eleven chapter. We're going to start at the 14th verse. Let me get my topic out. My topic today is don't kill the male carrier. Oh. <laughs> male carrier. Don't kill the male carrier. Oh, go. Oh. Because a lot of times we try to kill the male carrier 
because the person that may be carrying the mail may be a female. I'm telling you, when the mail carrier come and they got your check, you don't care if the mail carrier is male or female. Only thing you want is your check. Come on. When the check is made out to you, you don't care whether the person is male or female as long as they making out the check to you. <laughs> Come on over here. I think I'm in the same. I'm Come in the right on. church today, right? right? Keep talking. Get my check, Jen. Thank so you. a lot of times, amen. You said you said your response is a lady. You said, get my check in. <laughs> but a lot of times we get construed and we get construed because a lot of times the the mail carrier may be a woman that's carrying the word of God. And we come against the carrier because of gender. Mm. And we let gender separate what she's carrying. When you carry the word, it's a powerful thing to carry the word. But don't get construed or get a miss your blessing or your breakthrough because of the gender that carries the male. Let's go to the word of God because in my the text today, you're going to see that it was a man carrying this letter. But he was carrying his own death notice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the word. And then I can preach right there because the, the text itself gives the message. Oh, yeah. Second Samuel, the 11th chapter, starting at the 14th verse, it says, in the morning it happened that David wrote a letter. To Joab. Uh-huh. You see the correlations in that minister? Come on. Uh-huh. To Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the, in the forefront of the highest part of the battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. Sometimes your enemy will try to set you up so you can be killed. So that's why I keep trying to tell y'all on today, don't kill the male carrier. carrier. You gotta come on up in here. Some people kill the male carrier because of what they carry or what they possess. The male carrier had character. Uriah was faithful because if you go up in the story, when Uriah came home to be, well, they wanted, they called Uriah from battle to come home to be with his wife, but she was. Because David was trying to cover up his sin. And so because David was trying to cover up his sin, he slept with Bathsheba because he seen her out there taking a bath. Come on up in here. Now he just couldn't look and go and be with the 300 wives that he had. Because I'm quite sure they went all out shopping together. Uh oh, oh y'all better come on up in here. They went all out at the beauty salon. They went all on their women's Monthly. Somebody come on and be real with me up in here today. <laughs> you talking. Come on. He could have been with any one of them, but he seen her. Oh. And so when he seen her, he said, How <laughs> her? I'm the king. Fetcher. You know, when you got servants, you can give authority to other people. But watch it when you got authority, because when you abuse authority, you get in trouble. Come on. David abused his authority that day because he sent his servants to go get another man's wife. Ooh and a lot of times we get into that place because we in a place of authority. Oh, and because we are in that place, we abuse our authority because I'm a man. I got 
the right to do this. Because I'm king and priest. Be careful that you don't abuse your authority. Your authority. Uriah carried his death letter. Lord have mercy. He was carrying his death letter because he had some other man slept with his wife. And when David tried to beguile him to go sleep with his wife, after, after he laid and played with her, can I just make him play every day? Uh -huh. Go ahead up here. After he done laid and played and had his love, <laughs> he don't go sit for the man to come from war Ooh. because now she's pregnant. Y'all y'all better hear what I'm talking about. Ooh. Because now my sins is fit to tell on me and how can her husband get her pregnant and he at war? Mm. So let me send for her husband. He tried everything. Uriah was so honorable, he slept in the swear. He said, how can I go in and drink and eat and be merry and be with my wife when other men's came? He was honorable. Not only was he honorable, but he was faithful to the king. Don't kill the mail carrier. Some people kill the mail carrier because of their own sin. Their own pride. Their own selfishness. They was in sin, so now they want to cover it up. So they're trying to do everything they can to get you out of the will of God. Have you ever seen people that ain't even going to church no more, but they want you out of church? Uh, you better talk it. Oh, I'm in the right church. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> they mad at you because they know they're supposed to be preaching and the Lord no word. And because now they see you teaching and preaching the word is a problem. Ah, talk it. Because now you're studying to show your self-approval. You're not relying on them to tell you, but you're making a conscious decision for yourself. I will say that people got in trouble when they start letting people find out the truth. And research it for themselves. Then we found out that half of the stuff that people just told you was a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were good with you when you just do a lie. That's so true. But the moment you open the word and start studying the word for yourself, yeah. and you begin to pull out the truth. Come on. And they still going on what somebody else taught them. The spirit of religion could kill you. Hey. Don't kill the mail carrier. Let me go back to the word because I don't know how to got a little bit too far, but there's so much in this. I want to bring all this out. Y'all just stay with me a minute and I'm going to bring this out. Lord, have mercy. We're here. We're here. I got the rocks ready. So it was when Joel besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew where he, the, 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 it was vigilant, it was hot, meaning the battle was in heat, it was intensified. He assigned him to a place where he could be killed. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joanna, and some of the people of the servant of David fell, and Uriah, the Hittites, they died. All of them died also. Then Joel sent and told David all these things concerning the war. And charged the messenger, they go to the messengers again, don't kill the male carrier. <laughs> then they charged, saying, when you finish telling the matters of the war to the king, and if it happened that the king Wrath rises and say to you, why did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? 
Don't you know that you got people that's watching you from a distance? And if you get too close to them, they are shooting to kill you. And y'all got to understand that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And sometimes when the shots is fired, it's not always with a gun, an arrow, or a knife. Sometimes you shoot and kill people with your mouth. Hey. Things can be tamed, but the tongue seems to be untamable. Better go ahead. Come on, quote it. Come on. Uh-huh. Find it. Uh-huh. We're a word church in here. And we can't quote stuff that we can't find. So even on Sundays, we teach it. Find it. And y'all living in a dispensational time where you can Google it. <laughs> so find it. Hallelujah. Mm. And he says, And who struck a lemon at the son of Jerusalem? Was it not a woman who cast a piece of a milestone on him from the wall? so that he would die in the churches. They already knew not to get that close to the wall, but David, the king, said, notice the place Uriah by the wall so he could get killed on purpose. <laughs> what kind? What trickery? Somebody who you love trying to kill you. You love them, you're faithful to them. You have authority over them, but you're killing them. Mm. We have to learn how to walk in love and forgiveness too, y'all. Because just because a person trying to kill you, that don't mean that you disrespect or dishonor them. Sometimes you just gotta move yourself and love them from a distance. But you have to keep going to where God is trying to take you. You don't abort your assignment of what God has called for you in your life, living in your past. Bless your name, Lord God. Uh, so the messenger went and came and told David all that Joel had sent him, sent by him. And the messenger said to David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out to us in the field. Then we drove them back as far as the entrance of the gate. But the archmen shot from the wall at your servant, and some of the king's servants are dead. And your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. Then David said to the messenger, Thus you shall say to Joab, do not let this thing displease you, for the sword devour one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it. So he encouraged him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. Now she is already committing adultery and sleeping with another man, but when she heard that her husband was dead, Lord have mercy. This is a whole mess going on right here. Yep. That don't mean that she didn't love her husband. She was faithful to him until the king said, go bring her here. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Temptation, <laughs> temptation. Mm -hmm. Let me go on to, to come back to, I'm going to go to 26. And when Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when her mourning was over, they had sent and brought her to his house. <laughs> and she became his wife and bore his son. 
But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. God. Uh oh. A lot of times we get into that place we are trying to kill the messenger. We'll kill the messenger or the mail carrier because of their gender. This one, it was trying to kill your writer because of his own sin. I say to you today, get into a place. If they are going to hear the truth, let them hear the truth because Jesus is soon to come. God has a, let God have his way in your life and let him speak life unto you. If the person is carrying the word of God and they are the messenger, let the word of God be birthed so on the inside of them that men will see God's light and get saved. It don't matter whether you male or female, preach Jesus. Is the woman named 
before we became Eve was Adam. And a lot of times what people get construed is God, see, when I say it like this, they'll be trying to say that I'm trying to change the word, but if you don't know the word, how can you try to say I'm changing something that you don't know? God put Adam to sleep and he got Adam out of Adam. <laughs> you better go ahead. Oh, y'all don't know what I think I'm yeah. sure. Eve's first name was Adam. You don't believe me? Where is it found, Russell? Genesis 5 and 2. <laughs> Study your word. Oh, I don't play with them in here. You better know the word. Off the top of your head. I come, I'm like, where's repentance? Well, repentance up. Uh, okay. Where's baptism? Uh -huh. <laughs> she called it the same one. Somebody give me a different scripture for repentance. That's baptism. Where's repentance? Galatians, Galatians 3.27. Okay. Don't play with me. You better know the word. Come on. Create me a clean heart. That's repentance. Come on here. I can drill Roscoe all day because that's all he do. He, he catch you on the side. What's the repentance? What's the repentance? What's the repentance? What's the repentance? I said, Jesus Christ, you're worse than me. No, but I want him to know the word for him. Yeah. Study to what? So yourself approve. How you all teaching and preaching on the street and you don't know the word? How you going to tell somebody how to repent for the mission of their sins you don't know where it's to be found at? Where is the foundational scriptures? We talk about a loving God and we don't know how to show people how to get baptized in his name? Those are something that we should know off the top of our head. Salvation, repentance, and baptism. It shouldn't even be a guess. You should automatically know it. Because if you don't know that, how you say it? Mm. How you say it? Oh, John 3, 3, John 3, 5. Because Romans 10 and 10 say if you what? Confess with your what? Mouth and, and believe in thy heart that Jesus is Christ. Lord. So how you telling somebody yeah, confess and you don't know what to tell them to the word go? How you know it's confess? Messenger. The mail carrier. Oh. <laughs> Whether the mail carrier a mail is female, as long as they preaching the gospel. Preaching in season and out of season. Tell the truth whether they want to hear it or they don't. You better repent. Jesus is coming. Come on in the ark because it's about to rain. She knows the difference between the two. Uh-huh. In 2 Timothy, what, uh, Roscoe? What is it, Roscoe? He knows the answer. 2 Timothy 2 and 12. He knows the answer. People don't be Roscoe for their word. I'm trying to tell him that boy, much as I'm on him, I'm on him like spank on doodle. You better know because I realize that he's called. I realize that God is going to use it for his glory where he's predestined to go. And just because I'm a female and he's a male, do I play with you, sir? 
I come for, don't I come for you quick? Yeah. And I ain't always soft about it. Now I'm all female, I'm not trying to take the place of my husband. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? But when it comes down to them teaching and preaching the word, I need you to know what you're talking about because Jesus is soon to come. And people need to have their call in the election made sure when people are studying killing mail carriers. The people that's carrying the word of God. And you wonder why the church is in the mess the way it is. The reason why the church is so messed up because God said, I'm taking it out of man's hand and I'm placing who I want and desire to be in the pulpit, whether it be male or female. She go or he go preach. of the word. Because time is winding up. You can't see that time has changed. Never was it known in the history of a woman being in the president. Now we have our vice president in the United States, Kamalita Harris, woman. And it don't take nothing from her husband. Because she married. Amen. Uh huh. One. Vice president. Don't take nothing from her husband. But her husband, what separates her in that area is just the office. That's the only difference. When we come into church, the only thing that separates me is the office that I carry. Because I'm carrying God's word. Stop killing the mail carrier. The mail carrier. I guarantee you, if come to tell you to do something, you're going to jump. I know the dog tell. I'm a man. I ain't finna. Ain't no woman going to tell me to do nothing. What I look like. I'm a man. I remember when me and my husband first got married. So my wife ain't gonna tell me nothing. I'm a husband. <laughs> you know what? You know what changed that? God. You know how? How? How did it change? Prayer. He said, "I'm leaving. I ain't gotta take this. I'm gonna leave her. The only way." I'm going to stay with her and God got to throw me back through the window. I'm out of here. <laughs> As you can see, he must have been rolling through that window. He over there on the camera. <laughs> God got away of humbling you. Yes. <laughs> and it's vice versa. I didn't, I didn't try to be like, look at this here. I have had enough of this. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. God said, don't divorce your husband. Y'all don't know what it takes to carry the word? Do you understand what it really took for Mary to carry the word? Because Mary carried the word in her womb. She was impregnated with Jesus, so she was a male carrier. carrier. She carried the word. And she had to endure ridicule. They tried to keep it a secret because they knew if, if it really got out and everybody knew, they knew they would stone her to death. So her husband stood up, covered her. And, and what I love about God, he came and he spoke to Joseph and said, Don't be afraid to take Mary. As your wife. Because what she's carrying, Lord have mercy, is going to bring deliverance to the home. <laughs> Could you imagine God is telling somebody else that the woman is carrying him? <laughs> Think about it. He said, if you see me, then you see my father, for we are what? One. One. So he was coming down to tell him 
to not be afraid. Ah, yeah. did you get it? Yep. He was telling him to not be afraid of him. Because he was in the <laughs> And she was carrying the word. So we have to stop killing the male carrier. We kill them with our mouths. Thinking that God has not called them to carry the word. The Bible says that Mary was chosen above all women to carry the word. Lord have mercy. Some of you are being chosen to carry the word and you cannot be afraid of what nobody's saying. You're going to have to stand flat foot and preach in season and out of season whether they want to hear it or not. You're going to have to preach the word and stop being afraid of men and their faces. See men as men and not as trees. But preach the word in season and out of season. Don't be the kind of person to be how David was at that time. Because David later repented. But when he sinned, and God was displeased when Bathsheba went to bear that son. The baby was sick. Y'all got to understand this. God got a way of whooping your behind. He'll bring sickness on there when you ain't in your right place. See, that's why you got to learn how to thank God for the activities of your limbs. All of a sudden, you start feeling pain in places you didn't even know it was a part of your body. Sickness will come on. But because we are killing the mail carrier, and the mail carrier got the gift to lay hands on the sick, come on here, that the sick will recover. But because you're killing the mail carrier, you can't get healed. Uh oh. We got to learn. I don't care who it is that got my blessing, whether you male, female, chicken, dog, or George. I want my breakthrough. I don't care what your name may be. If God has placed the blessing on you to give it to me, I will receive it humbly. Thank you. When that mailman come to my house and they got a check, and that check say Kim Murphy, I don't care whether it was male, female, dog, or cat. Some people say that a dog, Lord have mercy, is very faithful. That a dog is loyal. And they said a dog is a man's best friend. But what they don't say in the rhyme, whether the dog is a female or a male, all it says is that a dog is a man's best friend. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. That was a good one. They said a man's best friend is a dog, but they don't know whether it's male or female. I got a pop up. Papa loved his dog, Ginger. Ginger is a dog, but she's a girl. Hey, your man's best friend. He Papa. don't care whether Ginger, he be like, Ginger, I mean, Ginger, get here. Come to daddy. Ginger. Ginger seen me and fell in love with me. She changed my mind about dogs. I, every time somebody asks me about a dog, I said, nope. I got too many kids that have a dog. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to feed you. I can't feed you and the dog at the same time. The dog ain't going to get no food. He's going to be anorexic because if it came down to the dog eating and you eat, you going to eat, that dog will stop. <laughs> I'm trying to take you to the doctor. How I'm going to take the dog to the doctor. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Because they got to take the dog to the vet. The dog got to get his nails cut. Now they're putting clothes on the dog. They had a beautiful dog. Lord have mercy. They will leave and die on this earth and leave an inheritance to the dog. All dogs go to heaven. Yes. 
Oh, y'all better leave me in here. I'm preaching good. All dog, go to hell. And let me just tell myself, keep on preaching, Kim. I show sure you. You're preaching good. Go ahead. <laughs> the dog. How can you leave an inheritance to a dog? Then they got to. <laughs> And so then they, yes, they look for who is going to be in charge over the dog so they can be in charge over the finances. What a check at. <laughs> you know what? I ain't going to look over there that boy crazy. <laughs> in other words, he said, what a check at. I will take good care of that dog. I'll give that dog millions. He's going to eat for late and young for the rest of his life. What a check. <laughs> But what I'm trying to get you to see is we have more respect for a dog than we do a woman. If you change the better thing a dog, it stands for God. So therefore, you got respect for God also. Let me, let, me let, let me let this woman right here help me preach. Say, say that to the microphone. If you change the lettering a dog, which in reverse spells God, you have respect for God also. But dog is the man's best friend. If you look in the word of God, the, 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 the word of God said, I no longer call you servant, but I call you friend. I no longer call you servant, but I call you Google it, find it. Know the word. No quote. If you don't know. And don't get offended that you look it, because that's gonna sharpen you. How you get mad at the people that's teaching you? People get it confused because I honor my spiritual father. I do. Do I always like what he got to say? I absolutely don't. But do I honor? I absolutely do. Do I disrespect? I absolutely don't. He didn't play with me. The things he used to tell me when I was coming up, he said, I'm going to train you like the guys. So don't look for me to have compassion on you. I'm going to train you like you're a man, even though you're all woman. John 15, 15. Because where you going and what you got to do is important. I remember... Teaching under the tent revival. I love tent revival. Love being outside. It's where the ministers got a chance to preach. You minister in this church has got a little spoiled because I let y'all preach all the time. You didn't get in the pulpit too often. Now only special services. I understand why he did it. Because it made you respect God and respect the pulpit. And not coming up in there giving God no anything, but to give God your best. I understand why he did what he did. You don't never stand behind the pulpit or the, the sacred desk and not give your best. And make excuses. Tell me I was busy. I had to work. I had to do. What if God say, I was over here working. Why you worried about it? You could have been hungry for another eight days. I was over here. What if God was like us? I love how she said, if you turn dog around, it spelled G-O-D. Stop putting God and making God's over things. But give God all the glory. What's his name? Jesus. Oh, I can't hear y'all in the sanctuary. What is his name? Jesus. He's the only name. Yahweh. Yahweh. Emmanuel. Alpha. Elohim. Elion. Jehovah Jireh. Come on here. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. He has many names. But one of the names that I love that he say his name is that y'all been called? I am. I am that I am. I am. 
<laughs> he was saying to himself, I am. Anybody love I am? <laughs> How bad I am? Come on now. Hmm. I can write a sermon to that. I love I am because I won't eat green eggs in hell. That's the only uh... I hear you. I see you. Y'all don't think y'all don't think that's a good run stuff. They think he quiet. He ain't quiet. You didn't see him back there in five minutes. <laughs> oh, y'all don't think he talk. Oh, yes, he does. Five minutes. This means <laughs> wrap it up. This means cut it off. This means you got two minutes. Thank you for being here. Gonna go over time. Go past some of them, and we thank y'all for coming out. Real slow. <laughs> Don't kill the male carrier. I hope I said something today that caused you to be blessed. This is our call. Don't lose my notes because I'm gonna I'm a put a series in there. Some of you ministers can write a word to that. Don't kill the milk carrier. Some of y'all killing Jesus because y'all keep nailing him to the cross. Somebody say he got up. He got up. With all power in his hand. So since God got up, why don't you get up? See, this is what I love about God. He don't care your age. He don't care how old or young you is. When he has called you from the foundation of this world to preach and teach the gospel, he said, come on and teach it. I don't care if you're 50, you're 60, you're 70. Let me tell y'all something. I was watching Facebook the other day. I, I, I think Facebook it became a TV. I watched the Facebook and the TikTok. I became a TikTok watcher. And it was an old lady. She was 83 years old. And she came out of a church that didn't like women preachers. And she was in that church all her born days. But when she kept hearing the Lord told her, she 83 now, that she had to preach the gospel. She went on the side of her house. And she got a podium just like this. And she 83 years old and she's standing flat foot on the side of her house going Facebook Live preaching the gospel on the side of her house. That's what we call being a soldier in the army of the Lord. 83 years old. And if she can preach at 83, Apostles was young too. Come on. When it's your destiny, it's your destiny. Let God arrive and let the enemy be scattered. Stop killing the male carrier. Come on, stand to your feet. This is all to come. I want to say to those that is watching us by Facebook, it is altar call here in the sanctuary. God bless you. Take that message with you, leaders. Encourage the next leader. Encourage the next church. Let uh, God arise and let the enemy be scattered. Let deliverance take place.